hardware changes from birch to chestnut are small but have a nice usability improvement. On the outside, the two models of the Librem 5 look the same, but you'll notice a difference when you plug in the Librem 5s. On the birch batch, it doesn't enter a charging state when you plug it in while off, at least not automatically. This is fixed in chestnut. When I first plugged in the chestnut, it auto-powered on. This new model can and does charge just fine while in an off state. The chestnut also seems to have a bit better heat dissipation, but both devices still get pretty hot. I have a thermal camera coming next week. That should better be able to tell if there are improvements. Calling on the Librem 5 is spotty. It will work one moment and then the next not at all. But when it does work, it has a few issues. The proximity sensor doesn't lock the screen. So your face is pretty likely to mess with the UI. Holding the phone like a normal person seems to result in no audio getting across. I ended up holding the phone like an old person in order to get the audio to work right. I'm guessing this has something to do with the echo reduction and should be fixable in software. This is a test of the call audio quality on a Librem 5. Texting can be inconsistent, but I found it to be much more reliable than calling. It basically always works if you toggle the hardware baseband switch. The mobile data works really well while I'm out and about, but when I'm in my apartment, the Librem 5 thinks I'm attached to 4G and even gets an IP address from T-Mobile. But no data works on the phone, including Wi-Fi. I have to disable mobile data for the Wi-Fi to work. Stability was also an issue when I first got the Librem 5 chestnut. I think this was because the power status is not always reported correctly. This means that the OS might think that a phone is charging when it is actually unplugged, and vice versa. The auto suspend feature in conjunction with the improper reported battery state is causing the instability. But that's just a guess. After I disabled automatic suspend, the Librem 5 will work as long as it's powered and not too hot. During this week I had an uptime of 3 days, but with updates coming in as often as they do, it's best practice just to reboot daily. Headphones on both the Birch and Chestnut only kind of work. You can get sound to play over them, but they will be accompanied with heavy static. Bluetooth is working very well. I have struggled with Bluetooth on lots of phones, but this was the best experience I've had so far. I turned on the headset, went into settings, and connected it. The hardest part was I had to remember to switch my output device to be the Bluetooth headset. Firefox can now be used on the Librem 5. You'll need to use the alternative keyboard though. Check out my last video for directions. You'll also need to set up an environment variable, which can be done by editing this .desktop file. With that done, the web browser works amazingly well. The scrolling works pretty quick, and you can even watch things like MB. Phonic, the audiobook player I've been working on, now looks much better, and is even packaged as a .deb. But this leads me to another issue. The package war of the Librem 5 is somewhat unsettled. Some are packaging as Flatpak, while others like myself are packaging as .deb. Getting your .deb into the Debian repository is one way to publish for the Librem 5, but that is not a simple process. The Librem 5 is now using the mainline version of Mesa, which should eventually enable 3D acceleration for flat packs, which will be a supported way to publish at some point. If you don't want to wait for Flatpak and you don't want to work directly with Debian developers, you'll need to have your own Debian repo, which provides updates and dependencies for your app. This is where OpenRepos.net steps in. I have been working with Bazel to get PureOS support added. This will act as an unofficial community app store for the Librem 5, giving developers a repo to upload packages and whatever dependencies they might need, and exposing a simple-to-use store to install and update apps. The same thing was done on the Nokia MIMO tablets and phones and is being done on Selfish OS. Open Repos does have existing clients, but both are programmed in C++ and Qt and may include UI elements which aren't open and need removed. So I started work on Community Apps, which is a simple GTK Python interface for Open Repos. Right now, I'm the only thing in the store, but I'm hoping that will change fast. 
if the store did have apps, this is what it would look like. This is actually the Selfish OS apps, but, uh, but it should be pretty close to what this will look like in the future. The API calls do take a bit of time to return, which is why the store is a bit slow. A few things are missing from the app view page. I want to add the gallery button and the comments button next. The install button doesn't actually work at the moment due to a signing issue, but Bazel is working on this. I'm expecting that it will be fixed soonish. I know it's rather simple looking, but hell, it's the first version and it's GPL, so help us all out and send me a pull request. Big thanks to Bazel for doing all the hard work here, and thanks to the Purism devs who helped troubleshoot the signature error. Purism will need to focus on saving every drop of power and touching up the core phone functions. The community is now receiving hardware and can do whatever the hell they want to. Thanks for watching. Bye.